In this series, we will talk about the origins of the Roman Empire and the Italics. But we don't start as usual with Romulus and Remus. We want to look further back when the first migrants reached what is now Italy. Who were these people? Where did they come from? How did their culture develop? And how did the Roman Empire arise from this? We will answer all of these questions throughout the series. The first people who migrated to Italy were most likely Indo-Europeans and migrated from two main routes. One migration route was from Illyria and Greece to southern Italy by boat in the early first millennium BC. The other route was via the Alps. Celts began to settle there around 1000 BC, Etruscan around 900 BC. They settled mainly on the riverside landscapes. Initially they were shepherds, but later they settled permanently and established agriculture. The borders of today's Italy, or even of the Roman Empire in the late Republic period, are not exactly the borders of ancient Italy. At that time, the northern border was not the Alps, but the Apennines. After a few centuries, the Italians conquered the whole country. The eastern, southern and western borders were the coast, which corresponds to today's area if you leave out the islands. Etruria, Lazio and Campania formed the Italian heartland. The southern coastal areas, Apulia and Messapia, remained of secondary importance. It is important to know that the unification of Italy into the Roman Empire included not only the history of Rome, but also that of all Italian tribes. Although the Latin tribe, Rome, was undoubtedly the most influential <laughs> linguistic research, but also the renowned German ancient historian Theodore Mommsen are dividing the Italians into three original tribes, the Gepigian, Etruscan and Italian tribe. However, the Italic tribe is again divided into two parts. On the one hand, the Latin, and on the other hand, tribes with different dialects, like the Umbrians, Marsi, Volsci, or Samnites had, which were linguistically very similar. In the following picture, you can see the languages spoken by these tribes. The Iapigians spoke Messapic, the Etruscans Etruscan, the Latins a latino faliscan language, and the other Italian tribes an Osco-Umbrian dialect. Little is known about the Gepigians. They settled in southeastern Italy, on the Messapian or Calabrian peninsula, and in Apulia. There is a certain similarity to the Greek dialects in their language. However, this tribe began to break up very early, and was already in 400 BC almost extinct. The reason for the early dissolution is probably due to the low sense of identification, as their character is very mixed with that of other tribes. Their weak expression of a common sense of identification, plus their geographical location, close to Greece and Illyria, suggest that they are the oldest immigrants in Italy. They were completely annexed by the Roman Republic by 100 BC at the latest. The Etruscans inhabited central Italy, especially Tuscany, Lazio and Campania. They later settled further north in Emilia-Romagna or Veneto. It is believed that this is a pre-Indo-European tribe that has connections with the Latin language but has recently been assigned to the Tercenic language family. From the first century BC on, the culture and language developed backwards until they completely dissolved shortly after the birth of Christ, replaced by the Latin language and culture. The Italic tribes also inhabited the middle of the peninsula. They had like the Gepigians Indo-European origins, but they differed more from the Hellenic language. Their vocabulary was significantly broader, with more cultural words. The Italic tribes will be our main focus, and we will look at their development in more detail in later episodes. If you wish, I can create a more detailed video about the Etruscans and Gepigians as well. See you next time, your geek philosopher.